class. This is the tutorial for the basic watercolor techniques you will use for your final project. These are the materials you will need. I will put them into the description below. Before we start, I want to remind you that you should add water to your palette first and add pigment to the pool of water so you don't contaminate your color wells with other colors. This also keeps your paints consistent. Divide your sheet into 15 boxes. I marked my sheet 3.5 inches from the top and bottom edges. The center section will be slightly smaller, but that's okay. Next, I made marks 2.5 inches apart along the bottom edge. The last section is 3 inches, but that's okay. Do the same at the top, making sure the 3 inch section is on the same side. Next, label your boxes. I will put these into the description below. On the back, make sure to put your last name, first name, and your period. Moving on, in your first box, draw three polygons in one curve shape. They should all be touching each other. In the second box, draw the same shape the same way you did in the first box. When you start to paint, try not to touch the other colors. Here, paint a shape on the opposite end to allow the first to dry a bit. See what happens when I accidentally touch a wet shape while painting the background color. Add a layer of clean water to the second box and then do the same for the second box using the same colors. For the flat wash, you can use the flat brush to make a solid and even wash. For the graded wash, start out with the loaded brush. For each new line, add a little bit of water. Make sure you are cleaning out your brush before you load your brush with the new color for the variegated wash. Like the graded wash, the colors will blend naturally. I'm going to move ahead and do flat washes for the glazing and splendid boxes. You will need them to be dry by the time we get to them. Now lay down some newspaper revealing the dry spatter and wet spatter boxes. With the wet spatter side. You can use your brush or a toothbrush for this process. Play around with it. The more pigment to water ratio you have, the finer the spatter. The more water, the larger the spatter. You can see the difference having a wet page mix. Using a pointed object like a paper clip, scratch a shape into your paper. Nothing inappropriate. The paint will review your scratch when it gets filled. You can then paint with a crumpled piece of paper, your brush, or a sponge. This is a good way to make clouds. In your glazing box, paint right over the dried wash using semi-transparent paint. Here I loaded my sponge on both ends with different pigments and just stamped onto the dried wash. Sprinkle salt directly onto your wet paint. Margarita salt is recommended for better results. For the dry brush, gently tease your bristles apart and load it with pigment. Gently brush onto your paper. When using frisket, use a brush you don't care for. Make sure it is wet and don't let the frisket reach the ferrule. Let it dry before painting over it. Masking tape is good for blocking out portions you don't want to get painted. Crayons work in the same fashion. White is useful for clouds or snow on mountaintops. You don't have to draw clouds, but don't be inappropriate. Once again, make sure your first kit is dry before painting over it. You can paint these two boxes in with different colors. Make sure your paint is completely dry before removing the masking tape or first kit. Be gentle so your paper doesn't tear. Take care of your materials. Clean your palette and your brushes as well as your tabletops. Put your finished samples onto the drying rack. Once they are dry, you can flatten them out underneath heavy books if you need to.